Hey everybody, and welcome to this week's teen hour. So what we're gonna be doing this week is we are actually doing an adulting 101 program. Um, it's all about job hunting, and this is about initial job hunting. So like if you've never had a job before, um, kind of want to get started, this is gonna be a program for you. So uh, how this is gonna go is, this is actually being recorded via Zoom. Uh, so in just a minute, I'm gonna share my screen with you guys. We'll go through a presentation. Um, then I'm actually gonna walk you through a couple of resources that the library has um, that you guys can use from home um, to help you work on resumes, uh, learn about cover letters, that sort of thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and start sharing my screen and we'll start with this thing, okay? So oh, this is Adulting 101, job hunting, and uh, this presentation is designed, again, for those of you who are just starting to look for your first job or just kind of curious what the job uh, hunting process looks like. Um, so I'm thinking more like after school jobs or summer jobs, um, but this can be applied to, you know, other jobs in your life as well. So uh, it's a very basic introduction, um, but yeah, I wanted to put a couple of disclaimers in there um, because I am not a, a professional job advisor. Um, I'm a librarian, um, so I am just telling you some things that I've learned from personal experiences and some resources that I've um, learned about uh, during my career um, helping people try to locate quality resources. Um, so we have had other companies come in uh, to the library that are professionals when it comes to helping people find jobs. Um, we have done a Goodwill resume writing program. Um, we've had WorkSource come in. Um, so this information that I'm sharing today is primarily from those organizations. Okay, guys, so what we're going to cover today is looking uh, for job postings, um, your documents that you're going to need when you are applying for jobs. So that includes resumes, cover letters, applications, etc. We'll talk a little bit about the interview process, um, what that kind of looks like, what the expectations are, um, and then uh, those job and career tools that are available through the library. So, uh, First thing about looking for jobs is you actually have to look for it. So um, when you're looking for job postings, um, a lot of times people go online to try to find things, though sometimes you can just kind of walk around and jobs will put like help wanted ads like in their windows and stuff like that, um, which is kind of nice if you're looking for somewhere local that you like to, you know, somewhere you like to patron, maybe you want to work there, um, like a restaurant or something. Um, so when you guys are looking for jobs online, um, hopefully they will have job requirements listed there. Um, hopefully you'll know the location. Um, and we are going to talk a little bit about jobs uh, that are first primarily for students. Um, so like I said, looking for jobs online, many jobs um, will post on multiple platforms um, so they can get a larger pool of candidates. Um, some websites like Craigslist um, can be kind of a mixed bag when it comes to um, looking for jobs. Uh, if you do decide to look for jobs on Craigslist, I would highly recommend confirming that the job um, is posted on another site. Um, like Indeed is a good one to kind of check with um, or actually call the business to confirm that they're hiring. Um, don't use the number that's posted on Craigslist necessarily um, because sometimes people are scammy and um, maybe the job that you think sounds really awesome is actually not a real job. Uh, so just to protect yourself, I always recommend if you're looking on Craigslist to um, confirm elsewhere that that job does exist. Um, Cause like I said, sometimes people are scammy and you don't wanna get yourself in a bad situation. Um, there are some companies like Goodwill and Work, oh, excuse me, reading from the wrong slide. Um, so Google the company separately, like I said, make sure that the number is correct if there is a number posted on the Craigslist um, ad. Sometimes like they're totally legit, um, but sometimes they're not. So just be careful. Um, some sites that I would recommend other than Craigslist are indeed.com or glassdoor.com. Um, they're more reputable websites when it comes to posting um, job help wanted ads. Um, and then when you guys are actually looking at the job, 
Like, say you found one, it looks great. You're looking at the requirements. Um, what the job postings should include are a description of what the job requires of you, um, hours, things like that, expectations as far as like physical labor is concerned, or if you're like looking to be some kind of like typist or something, it'll ask you for your word count, um, how quickly you can type, that sort of thing. Um, and also uh, the pay should be listed because that's why you're looking for a job, right? To get some money. Um, so if you don't see a list of these requirements, you can always call the business and ask questions before um, taking the time to apply. Um, they might also be able to refer you to a different website, um, maybe like their host website uh, for that information too. So don't feel weird about calling jobs because if you have questions, you need to get them answered sometime, somehow. Um, so when you're looking at the location, uh, make sure you guys know where the job is and have a plan for how you're going to get there. Um, actually, during the application process, most jobs will ask if you have um, a reliable means of transportation to the job um, because they, of course, need to know that you'll get there on time and be able to rely on you to be at your shift. Um, so make sure that you're looking at the location and you have a plan for how you're going to get there. So um, again, if you're a student, um, some places, especially when you're in college, will like only hire student workers. Um, so when I was at college, uh, I went to the U of O for my undergraduate work, and um, they actually had campus jobs that were only open to students. Um, and that was really nice because they had uh, restrictions on the number of hours that you could work. Um, so that way you weren't getting put on you know, too many hours so that way you could study and sleep and all that good stuff. So that was really nice. Um, in if you're in high school, uh, that's not really going to be that much of a thing. Um, but some places like if there are, you know, local orchards or farms, um, you know, especially during the summertime, uh, you know, a lot of times they like to hire, you know, local kids um, to kind of help the community. So kind of keep an eye on those locations as well, especially during the summer months. Um, so we've got to the next slide. So let's talk a little bit about your application paperwork. Um, so you're going to need a resume. Uh, you will likely also fill out some kind of job application. Usually that's provided through the company, whether it's online or they physically have an application um, in in house. Um, and you guys probably won't have to worry about this um, right now, but some places do require a cover letter and we will go over what a cover letter is so that way you're not completely blindsided someday um, when you might be asked for one. So let's talk about the resume. The resume, um, as described by Resume Genius, because I thought they defined it really well, a resume is a formal document that provides an overview of your professional qualifications, including relevant work experience, skills, education, and notable accomplishments. Um, so the things that you're really going to want to include in a resume are those bullet points on the screen here. So um, contact details, and that's your contact details, so your phone number. Um, Sometimes people put in their uh, physical address or just where, like what city they're in. So that way, if you're applying somewhere in the future, if you were applying somewhere like out of state and you're wanting to move, they at least know where you are. Um, so sometimes they include an introduction. It depends on the kind of uh, resume you're putting together. Um, they want an educational background, if you have one, your work history and any relevant skills. So um, really quickly, I just wanted to say, don't panic if you guys don't have any work history. Um, if you're applying for your first job and you're just trying to figure out what to put on your resume, um, as far as like work history or relevant, um, relevant skills, uh, think about like extracurricular activities you've done, clubs you've been a part of, um, even if you have done things like babysitting or, um, you know, helping your neighbor take care of their yard, uh, things like that are all relevant skills. They show that you are um, responsible, that you have um, a work ethic. So those are the things that people are looking for. And if you've never had a job before, then of course you're not going to have work history. Um, and companies and businesses know that. So um, don't stress just think about all of the cool things that you have done. Um, even volunteer work is really good to put on a resume. Um, so basically what you're trying to do is show your prospective employer that you are responsible um, and that you take your commitment seriously. The goal of a resume is to convince the employer that you're worth interviewing. So that's what you want. You want to put um, forward your, you know, 
best self on your piece of paper. So an application, a job will say if it requires you to fill out an application. Like I said before, sometimes that's going to be online. Sometimes they actually have a physical application that you need to fill out. <clears throat> and sometimes there isn't one. Some jobs just want you to bring in a resume um, and they don't have a formal application uh, form for you. And that's okay. Just, you know, they'll let you know. Um, so Again, if you um, are moving, as you move like more towards like just working random jobs to your like career oriented jobs, um, you will find that filling out an application is almost always part of the process. Um, and right now, as you're looking for your first job or your second job, um, applications might not be as much of a thing as they will later in your life. <clears throat> So I really quickly wanted to talk about the cover letter. Um, we won't get too much into cover letters here, but just letting you know what it is when an employer eventually asks for one. Um, Resume Genius had another great definition for the cover letter. Uh, it defined a cover letter as a one-page document that introduces a job seeker's work history, professional skills, and personal interests in applying for the job. Um, and its purpose is to expand upon the achievements in your resume, showcase your personality, and explain why you'd be a good fit for the company. Um, so essentially what a cover letter is, is like a very short essay that kind of um, expands on information that's in your resume. Uh, sometimes resumes, uh, you're basically just putting bullet points because you want your uh, prospective employer to be able to read through them quickly. Um, and a cover letter allows you to talk a little bit more about yourself if there are any particular um, situations that you're really proud of that you want to highlight, um, just to let your, you know, hire, the hiring person know who you are, what you've done a little bit more before they actually get to the interview process. <clears throat> Excuse me. So there are a lot of great cover letter templates online, um, and the library also has great resources um, that will help you put together a cover letter or a resume, because um, it can be kind of an overwhelming thing to put yourself on paper. So we'll talk about that in just a moment. Okay, let's talk about interviews. Um, if you get an interview, that means that the employer is interested in you um, and potentially hiring you, so congratulations. Um, here are some tips and resources um, to look at when you're preparing for an interview. Um, the first is be on time. Um, be actually a little bit early to your interview. Um, because if you are late for your interview, that is not going to leave a good impression with your potential employer. Um, they're gonna feel like they can't trust you to show up for your uh, ships on time. Um, they might think you're a little bit flaky, so we don't want that. Um, however, life happens. If you have a legitimate reason for running late, like if your car broke down or um, if there was like a traffic accident and you're stopped in traffic, um, just call ahead and let them know why you're running late. Uh, you might be able to reschedule the interview. They might be fine with you coming in just a little bit late. At least that way um, you're opening up communication channels and they know that uh, you're responsible enough to call them if something's going on. Um, so the next thing is your appearance. So um, it is important to, you know, put some effort into your appearance when you are uh, applying for a job. Um, you know, wear your nice, you know, prof the most professional clothes you have. Um, you know, you want to make sure you brush your hair, brush your teeth. Um, like say you're working, you want to hire, work at like a fast food place or a grocery store. Um, you still want to look like you care that you get the job. Um, so you want to look responsible, you want to look professional. Um, so if you like show up in your sweatpants and your Crocs, that doesn't really look like you're taking the job uh, very seriously. So despite what you might wear during the job, you want to put your best foot forward when you're applying for the job, if that makes sense. Um, Make sure that you uh, have some questions um, ready when you're at the inter like when you're thinking about your interview process. Um, this might not 
quite be as relevant um, when in your first job or your second job. But as you are moving forward in your career, you might have questions um, that you want to ask your interviewer. Um, like say, if you are interested in working on weekends, um, make sure that you ask like, hey, are there any weekend shifts available? I'm really interested in that. Um, asking about if they are going to require you to work in the evenings um, or in the mornings, just anything like that. So that way you have a better idea of if the job is even going to be a good fit for you. Because sometimes when you're looking at, um, you know, the requirements or the description of the job, um, sometimes your questions might not be answered there. And uh, during the interview, at the interview, is actually a really good uh, time to ask those questions at the very end. Once they've finished all their questions for you, they'll be like, so do you have any questions for us? That's a good time to bring it up. Um, it's also kind of a nice idea to bring extra resumes. Um, it's a little bit of an older practice. However, some places might still ask you for a resume. Um, like say if you were, uh, if the interview was set up by like a hiring manager, but someone else is doing the interviewing, um, they may not have really seen your resume um, and they might ask for it. And so it's always good just to be a little bit prepared. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and move away from the slideshow presentation, and we are going to look at these two websites. Um, the first one is called Learning Express. Uh, the other one is called gcflearnfree.org. They're both available through uh, the Fernridge Library website, um, and I will show you how to access those. Okay, so we are currently on uh, the Fernridge Library website. Here we are. I actually have um, a special tab for you guys under online resources. If you go to online resources for teens, um, this is actually the page that's going to take you to. And um, the two databases that we are going to be looking at are going to be this first one here, the Learning Express Library. And then the second one is the gcflearnfree.org. So these little graphics are actually hyperlinked. Um, so they will take you uh, right where you need to go. So the first one that we're going to go to is Learning Express. Okay. So um, what we are going to be looking at is this one here. Um, so the Job and Career Accelerator. Um, this one's kind of cool too, the career preparation, but that's more like if you are looking into specific um, areas like of study, like if you're thinking about going to college and you're like, hmm, I wonder what it takes to go into this career, um, what's expected, that sort of thing. So cool tool, but it's not one we're going to look at right now. So Jobs and Career Accelerator, let's click on it. So um, you can see here there's a little drop down menu that pulls up. Um, this one, build resumes and jo uh, job letters. So that's another um, word for a cover letter. Um, and then prepare for an interview. So we'll go ahead and go to build resume and job letters. And um, this is going to be the site that it takes you to. Um, it'll have you sign in. Um, it's free. You don't have to worry about you know, paying for anything. Um, but uh, if you wanted to like save your work, for example, that's why it has you sign in. So here we have build your resume, build a cover letter. Um, this is a tutorial for making great cover letters, great resumes. Um, so these are some really nice tools for you and they're actually um, tutorials. So they have like videos that show you what to do. And then we're gonna go back here just a second and we're gonna look at prepare for an interview. Um, and this is going to be the same sort of thing where um, you are learning about the interview process. Um, and, you know, sometimes after an interview, it's really nice to send a thank you letter. Um, places really like that. It's not a very common thing to do. But when people get thank you letters, um, especially if you're looking to apply to that same place again later, um, it just adds kind of a personal touch. And it's really nice. Um, and then 
you've got some more, you know, job interview videos here. Um, and this one, don't really need to worry that much about, but, um, you know, job offers and salary negotiations, you guys don't need to worry about uh, negotiating for your salary yet. Um, but it's nice to know that these sorts of things exist. Um, it's also kind of nice to know that eventually some, you'll, you'll probably leave your job. Um, so it's, nice to know kind of so how to turn down um, a job offer if you were given um, another job offer that you really liked um, and that way you're not like burning any bridges. So now we're going to go to the gcflearnfree.org. Um, these are going to be kind of similar. We're going to go, this is going to be the home page, scroll down just a smidge, and you're gonna click on work. And this is the work page. Um, again, there's gonna be a really broad um, set of examples and resources here. So we are looking um, mostly at this one right here, the job search and applying for jobs. Um, but some of these other things are really nice too. Um, so career planning, this might be nice if you guys are getting ready to go to college and you're kind of looking at um, what you might want to do. Uh, maybe you guys are um, thinking about maybe not going to college, but you still want to get um, you know, a good career. Um, they have like a section that says careers without college. So that way you guys know um, kind of what you're in for. Let's look at resume writing. Okay, so the thing that I really like about this website is um, it breaks it down for how they are going to help you through this process. So they explain why you need a resume and they talk about resume formats um, and just you know tips and strategies. Um, they also make sure that you know what information to include. Um, so it's just a really nice way um, to go through and learn about this process. Um, they even have like a gallery of sample resumes, which is nice, um, and then some resources that they recommend um, for using when you are writing your own resume. Um, and then they have like a quiz. If you want to take a quiz, you don't have to, um, but that's something that you could do. And you just click on these different parts. Go back. Um, and then there's also like interviewing skills down here, which is really nice. Um, these have a lot of similar um, topics. So uh, this is going to tell you about interview skills. So there are different types of interviews that you might um, be invited to, um, how to prepare, what to do during the interview, um, you know, things like don't bring your, <laughs> one thing people say a lot is don't bring your keys into the interview because a lot of people uh, are nervous when they're interviewing and they fidget and so they'll fidget with their keys and it's really distracting. Um, another thing is to, you know, turn off your phone when you're in an interview, that sort of thing, sort of like interview etiquette, um, how to follow up. Um, and also this number five is actually a really important thing. Um, there are certain questions that um, interviewers cannot legally ask an interviewee. Um, so it's kind of a red flag if um, they ask you these questions. So just kind of knowing your rights um, as a worker um, is really is really great. So that's kind of a cool one that I, I wish I had known about when I was uh, first applying for jobs. Um, and then again, it has more suggested tutorials. Okay, so that was um, our Adulting 101 program. Uh, sorry that sometimes the computer got a little glitchy. Um, there's a lot of things going on uh, with this process. So typically what I would do during a normal in-person um, Adulting 101 
program, um, we've had a couple, I would open up um, the floor to you guys for you guys to ask questions or um, you know, express concerns or just thoughts that you guys had during the presentation. Obviously, right now I can't do that because this is an asynchronous program, so I'm recording this and you are watching it um, after I record it. So I wanted to um, let you guys know that you guys are more than welcome if you have any questions or concerns or if you like want to know more about these um, different resources that I showed you at the end of the presentation, um, feel free to give the library a call and ask for me, Caitlin. Um, if you guys want any of those questions answered or you can talk to anybody, but because I'm the service librarian who just asked for me. Um, or you guys can just come into the library and ask me questions too. I'm going to uh, try to post um, local job postings um, in the team area, um, just so that way you guys have um, a nice kind of like trusted resource when you guys are looking for jobs. Um, I can't say that I will always have jobs up, but if I see something um, that I think is a good fit for um, you know, teams in the area, I will definitely put it up and you guys can take a peek at it. Um, and I'll try to keep them as up to date as possible. So that's going to be today's program. Thank you guys so much for joining us. And I will see you guys uh, next Thursday for our next program. All right. See you guys later.